Good morning, Stampers. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot and our Technique Tuesday. Today's technique is salted background. Yep, that's just what it is. You add salt to your card. What else can we do? We use baby wipes, we use shaving cream. Why not salt? So what I'm going to show you is a couple different ways and what will happen with the different types of salt. So here's one card and I used larger salt rock on this and you'll see what I'm talking about as we move on. Um, although I did this on shimmer paper, um, there's a special little sparkle that the salt adds, the crystallization of the salt this is just perfect for holiday cards. I mean, it works for everything else, but holiday cards, it adds the extra sparkle for you. So when I figured out that it already adds sparkle, I decided I would try it on watercolor paper. So this one is done a little bit different with a little bit smaller salt rock. You can use salt rock, you can use table salt, uh, this this camera is just not doing this justice. It it leaves um, these really neat little swirls and spots. Um, I did add a few little stars to this one in the middle of some of the spots, so it's even uh, accented more. You can do in different colors. Here's one done with Bruchio colors and the larger salt rock. And to me, that just looked like an ocean background. So there we go. And that one was done on shimmer paper. Now, I've been experimenting with it. So if you look here, this is some of the larger salt rock there. And this is some of the, the medium. So the effect you get is going to depend on how you salt it. You can use, this one is my regular uh, grinder salt I use in my grinders. I also have the large salt rock here, which um, you use for ice cream making. So I would think your bigger projects, you might want to go with the larger but it depends on what effect you're going so and you can also grind your salt and just make it or if you have a, a shaker i don't own a shaker sorry i grind my salt but um i've seen it done where you just use your shaker salt and it's a real fine uh it's going to turn out more subtle like this one is this one i set my grinder at real fine and um, this is kind of how it came out. I really like it because it's got that crystal effect from the salt. And so it's going to be another one of those techniques. Play with it. Try to get, you know, see what effect you like the best. So today I'm just going to do a couple. And um, this first one, I'm going to use watercolor paper. And we're going to actually just use our regular ink. Like I said, this one here, I used your brusho colors. Brusho? Brusho? I never get that right, I'm sure. But you can use whatever medium you want. If you have um, uh, uh, watercolor inks or, you know, uh, alcohol inks and things like that, you can use those. Because this is done wet. So let's jump in so you understand or kind of see more of what I'm talking about. I'm sure you may have seen this. Uh, it's, it's another one of those old techniques, but it's an oldie but a goodie. So what you're going to need is uh, your color. Now you can either do one solid color. You can do multiple colors. Whatever you want to do for your watercolor wash, because basically we're going to do a watercolor wash and then we're going to add our salt. So I'm going to try a little bit of two-tone because I'm trying to achieve 
my night sky and I want some dark and light highlights in there so that's what I'm gonna do so you'll need your inks you need uh, either your aqua painter or a watercolor brush and some water I do have a spritzer um, if you have a stampin up spritzer I can't find my last one I use them all the time so they're all got things in them but the stampin up mister which I'll put a link to in this video is got a nice fine mist which will work really great for this but, you know this one this old bottle I have here it kind of spurts my salt off the paper because we're going to be misting the paper a little bit but we're going to we're going to make do you're also going to need your rock salt or table salt in the size you want to try so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these two pads and what I do is I put just a couple drops of my re-inker into the lids of my ink pads because you can always just smush it back down and it re-inks your pad. Or if your pad is really juicy, just squeeze it and ink will go into the lid for you. So let's set those up there. So I've got Night of Navy and Blueberry Bushel because I want to come up with my night sky. So let's just jump in and do it. And I know that I'm going to use, this is my medium size salt rock. So I'm going to use that one. And then on the next one, we'll try something different. So I want to spritz my paper just a little bit. And this is watercolor paper. Now you could do your sheet larger and tape it down. And that way it won't fold up on you but I've already cut this one the size I need for my project. So I'm going to start with my lighter blue. I'll just pick up a little bit of this blueberry bushel and I'm going to watercolor wash my sheet here. Now I'm going to and bring in a, you might need a paper towel you want to have. And I do have my, uh, my nonstick sheet here underneath. I always have one on my workspace. So I want to add some darker highlights in here just for some effect. Because your salt rock and your salt is going to lift a little bit of color. You can tell I've been doing this a while. I've got ink all over me. Have you guys not seen any of my videos where I wasn't covered in ink? I don't think so. I I have a, a scrubber in my bathroom just for getting ink off myself all the time. So I want to add some dark highlight in here. And you could do swipes. You could do uh, anything you want here. Whatever you'd like. So I've got that nice and so I'm going to take some of my salt rock and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. So again, you can use as little or as much of this as you want because wherever the salt is, is where it's going to, it's going to, it kind of leaves a, let me see if I can zoom in it. Um, the salt picks up the ink. Let me see if I can get this in camera. See where the ink is starting to gather around the salt? And there we go. Let me pick up a couple of those little pieces and sprinkle them on there. Now at this stage, if you want, you can spritz it lightly with water. And it's going to leave some more effects on there. It's going to um, kind of pick up a little bit more. But I'm kind of wanting to leave this just as it is. I'm going to grab a couple more here. And just put them. Now, you can use a heat tool at this point and dry your project. 
um, it does take a little bit to dry. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this aside because I have another one that I want to try with you where I have, let me pick up some of this. I have another piece of watercolor paper here. And what I did is I clear embossed on this one. And what I did is I took the snowflakes from the new free skate and I stamped a few of them and put clear embossing. Now we're going to do our water watercolor wash. I think we're going to end up with two really cool effects on this. One will be the embossing and one will be uh, the salt effect. And now, can you see how the salt is, is moving the ink around on this? Isn't that neat? It's really pretty. It's one of those techniques that I'm not sure I can get to show up on on film as well. I wish I had a better camera. So this one I'm doing my wash again. I'm kind of just pressing down with my nails so my paper goes flat. If it starts to pool on you, you can just kind of dab it with a paper towel. I'm going to add some of my dark highlights in here. And now we're going to add our salt. Oh, look at that. That's going to be... Let me see if I can push this down a little bit. So we're going to have two effects on this one. You know, it's holiday card time, so that's why we're kind of doing a, a winter scene here. Put some of these back. Okay, I think we got that one. Let me pick up a couple of these. Get them on there. Now at this point, you, like I said, you can spritz it and add a little more water if you want. But if you're using um, regular table salt, the real fine table salt, know that when you spritz it, your salt's just going to dissolve. So getting it off your sheet isn't going to really happen. It's just going to add a like a crystally effect to it. So I am going to heat set these and dry them. I'll speed up the video and then I'll show you how we're going to build something really neat with these. So I will go ahead and use my heat tool and dry these. Okay, so there we go. Now you gonna it takes as you saw a few minutes to to make sure your your cardstock is dry. And now what you're gonna do is just wipe your salt off. I'm gonna do this over my trash can real quick. And see it brushes right off. Look at that. Isn't that neat? How fun is that? That's going to make a fun background. See, that looks, look at that. Almost looks like a leopard print. But you'll see, it's going to come up nice on our project. Let's wipe this one off. Oh, I like the effect of this one, too. There we go. Look how fun and beautiful that is. Okay, I'm going to say I like I like the embossing on that. Put a little bit of snowflakes in there. You could put anything. You could do flowers and do this background. The, the possibilities are endless. So let me move this out of the way. 
And we'll build a card with one of these. And I think I'm going to want to go with my snowflakes. So what we're using today... Let me wipe some of this ink off me so I don't get it all over our project. So what we're going to go with today is I used our stitched rectangle dies. Let me move back out here a little. Get back in camera. So I used our stitched rectangle dies and created a frame. And this watercolor piece is the one that fits in the middle here. I just used regular Whisper White and I've put my um, uh, adhesive foam strips on there so it's ready. And then we used the fun dies from the snow globe scenes. You can make a snow globe. I love this set of dies. I love the whole the whole suite of projects actually. You got trees, you got a church, you got a house. Oh anyway, if you haven't got it, it's on the it's it should be on your want list. And what I did is I cut out the church and the uh, little building here. And on the back side of them, I took a piece of, just a small piece of yellow vellum. Or, or, or I don't remember if it's called so, so saffron vellum. It comes up, I'll have it in the listing of the parts. And all I did is put a little bit on the back side of these. And I cut them out in copper. Because I just thought copper would look really nice with this background. And we'll set those aside. So now what we want to do is we need a snowbank. So I've got a piece of shimmer white here. And what I do to make my snowbanks is I cut them a little bit larger. And then I'm just going to grab my scissors. And I'm going to create a snowbank. Just, there's no rhyme or reason. Just... A snowbank. I'll make sure that's not too big. Nope, oh, that looks about right. So now what I do is just grab my glue and put a little glue on there. I'm a glue girl, you know that. You can use your favorite adhesive. We're going to put our snowbank on here. Now, I haven't pressed down right there because I want to put my trees in there. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on our trees. This is really a quick card. You'd, you'd be really amazed. And I'm just going to tuck it right under our snowbank. There you go. And then press it down. And with the glue, you can make sure your snowbank is level with the bottom. And I'm just going to flip it over and trim off our excess. There we go. Look at that. And now, let's add our church. Look at the snowflakes. I love it. Wish I would have thought of that sooner. I thought of it as I was getting ready to prep for this, this video. And... I thought, well, hey, let's try it. So you got to try it with me. So I'm just going to put the little church about halfway down. So it's kind of sitting in the snow. Oh, uh, of course it fell glue side down. We've got our church. Now on this other one, I had put a little North Star. I don't think I need to do that now with this uh, snowbank here. So then what we're going to do is we've got some snow there. So I want to make sure my little trees have a little bit of Wink of Stella. Now they're glistening, glistening from the stars and the snow. So there we go. Then when you get ready to assemble your card, this is an A2 um, 
card base, four and a quarter by five and a half. Now, when I do mine with your it, your foam strips, if you add a little bit of glue to the adhesive here, you can actually move your frame. You know, because the adhesive strips, once they hit, they stick. But if you add just a touch of glue to it, then you have a little more time to make sure that your frame is on. See how it shifts just a little bit? So you have enough time to glue it and get it straight. Uh, it took me a long time to learn how to get these frames straight. I used to do this part first and then try to put the frame on. It was usually an epic fail. So now with the frame there, all I have to do is add my adhesive. And again, I use glue because you can move. You have just a little bit of room to move your item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and tuck the top in. And then drop it right down. And then while it's wet, shift it with your fingers to make sure it's square in the hole. See how it, it shifts around a little bit? There we go. I need to shift to the right a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I should have done this part first before I put it in there, but we're going to add a greeting. Make sure my little thing is shifted where it needs to be here. And now the greeting I'm going to use is from the Itty Bitty Christmas. And we're going to go with Blessed Christmas Wishes. So let's get that. I'm just going to put my magnet right down on my project here. This is where the Stamparatus always saves me when I forget to do my greetings or, or something. You know how that goes. And I'm just going to use regular Memento Black on this. I'm going to shift it down just a little bit. I want it down toward the bottom right. Oh, it's sticking to my finger. I'm just going to ink that up. Now, this is a really fine stamp. So, lightly, lightly ink your stamp. Because with the small little uh, nooks and crannies of this, it can grab a blob of ink. So just lightly press it down. And since you're using the Stamparatus, if it's not dark enough, see, I want it just a touch darker, then I can stamp it a second time. I'm just going to lightly ink it up. And we'll stamp it a second time. There you go. Look how quick and simple, and look at where the salt has left all these really neat color variances. Okay, the snowflakes are pretty cool, though. But I love this one. I will put a card together with this one. You're going to be surprised. You're probably looking at that going, what do we do with that? Just wait. I'll put a card at the bottom of the post with this. But that is how you do the salted background. So you can use medium salt, you can use your fine ground salt or table salt, but know that that is going to come out a lot uh, more subtle. It'll be a subtle, it'll change it, but it'll be subtle and it'll pretty much crystallize because the fine salt melts in the water. And then this is the large crystals. See how big the, the swirls and the designs are? So it's it's one of those techniques. Play with it. Here's the big salt on this one. And you can use your brush oak crystals. You can use multiple colors. So I'll put all these samples up for you on the bottom of the post. And I hope you enjoyed today's technique. 
Have a happy Stampin' Day. Bye-bye now.